sometimes they ask about the people that were doing the accusing. What was motivating them? Um, didn't they feel bad that people were dying as a result of what they were doing? And um, one of my responses is that, have you ever said something and that you knew it wasn't exactly right, but people seemed to respond in the way that you were, that you wanted, and so you couldn't go back and say, oh, no, no, I, that was an exaggeration, I made that up, you'd get in trouble or whatever. And they all can relate to that. Um, and also, I, I think this speaks to this question of maybe there was a lot of confusion going on. And so maybe the accusers were just doing it out of malicious intent or they had a history of bad feelings about a particular family that they were doing, that they were accusing the woman of. Um, but maybe something bad did happen to them that they really did think that this person caused it. I mean, people were talking all the time about, you know, this so-and-so walked by the house five years ago. After that, our cow died. Uh, you know, this, this didn't seem preposterous to them. This was, witchcraft was a way of answering certain strange things that happened in their world. So, you know, again, very credible to, to actually think that, yeah, my cow died and it probably was this person and we've had some bad dealings, so all these things kind of add up. You know, they're really um, racking their brains to see, you know, what they did in their life and, you know, really kind of soul searching and being good Puritans, really, because that's what you were supposed to do all the time is this constant soul searching. Um, so like with anything that you study historically, there really isn't one answer to any of these questions that, you, that can be raised about Salem. And um, there's just little glimmers that we think, well, maybe, maybe this is what was going on. Some people recanted. They initially confessed and then, and then took it back. So here's a, um, just a, a couple of sentence, sentences from this person, Margaret Jacobs. She wrote to her father from um, Salem Jail that she had confessed. And, and here's just a couple of words that I, th I think are so significant. She confessed by reason of, quote, the magistrate's threatenings and my own vile and wretched heart. So, you know, so they have both things going on here. She's, she's pressured into confessing. She feels pressure, external pressure. But she also feels this internal pressure that her own vile and wretched heart. Something about, you know, her past sins caused her to, to confess. Um, she says in, in a later statement, she characterized her confession as completely false, saying that she had, quote, been hurried out of my senses by the afflicted persons, saying they knew me to be an old witch, and if I would not confess, I should very speedily be hanged which was the occasion with my own wicked heart of my saying what I did say. This is one of the values of actually looking at the primary documents and, and immersing yourself in that. I mean, I think it's more important to, to emphasize that rather than emphasize the narrative of what actually happened. In fact, when I, when I teach this, I barely even tell the students what happened, how it ended, and any of it. I just say, you know, here's the Salem witchcraft trials. I explain, you know, what I explained here. Let's look at this. So they, they don't even know, really, because most of them, you know, haven't done the reading until <laughs> after, until before the exam. Um, so they might not even know the outcome, and we just plunge in to look at this, and I think that helps because then they're not so focused on how it ended or how things could have gone differently. I mean, they they can ask those questions by looking at this. What if they hadn't pushed them? Then would that have you know, what, well, someone will inevitably ask, why didn't they just um, question them in private? That would have avoided a lot of this, this uh, you know, the shrieking in the actual courtroom, that, the whole courtroom drama. And then I'll say, well, that's a really good idea. Asking in private is one of the, one of the um, women who was accused did say to the magistrates, look, this is uh, insanity what's going on here. Why don't we pursue this in private? And uh, sure enough, that, that suggestion, um, in, in combination with other things that contributed to the ending of the whole thing, um, did help to, um, you know, tone everything down. Because when you don't have that and you're just one-on-one, -on -one, it's a very different dynamic. Um, but so anyway, I, I, sometimes it's better not to give students 
everything because also then they think that they, they there's no need to look at the primary sources so much if they already know the answers because they you know many of them just want the answers for the test whereas <laughs> I don't want them to to focus so much on the answers I want them to see the process unfold because um, to me that's the exciting part of being a historian and I try to you know convey that to them that that's the exciting part let's see what these people were thinking to us it seems so out of our range of what's normal but this was normal for them so what's going on here let's you know focus on the primary sources <laughs>